it's been a long time, um, but I just wanted to come to you guys with my first month as a cloud native software engineer. So it's been a month, a little over a month actually, and I feel like I've learned so much. Um, currently I'm in a company sponsored bootcamp. It's called um, Cloud Bootcamp, obviously. So what they currently have us learning is Java, Spring, Angular, and Git. This is an entry level program. So it's ideally designed for people who um, have recently graduated college, who don't really have much work experience in the tech field or for career changers like myself and a few of my other classmates who this is their first role in tech. So a lot of them have never used Git before. Um, so it, it gave me a chance to kind of shine in Git. Java isn't as terrible as I thought it would be, I guess, because I wasn't very well versed in the language prior when I would see it, like that green book I always reference for you guys. I was like, what is this? But actually having to sit and learn it, it actually kind of makes sense. So I finished Java. Angular, you know, my coworkers are struggling with it, but because I learned React, I now start to understand that concept when people say, that once you learn one language, it's quick. It's easy to pick up another one because I learned Java in like a day and a half, um, just because it's literally like JavaScript, but differences with like there's way more uh, primitive data types. There's way more ways to like name variables. It's it's always about learning like the little nuances. So now I feel like I'm starting to understand when people say. Um, when you know one, you can quickly pick up another one. I'm starting to understand that. I struggled with picking up Python in the bootcamp. I don't know if it's mainly because of the bootcamp setting and like having to pick it up so quickly and learn all these things and that, or if I just still hate Python. So maybe now as a working professional, if I ever have to circle back to Python, maybe, you know, I may like it, but so far it's still on my, you're gonna have to pay me to learn list. <laughs> So that's mainly um, what I've been doing. The boot camp ends this week and it's not as intense. It's pretty like self-paced. I have a lot of uh, meetings with my, I guess, older coworkers. So mostly software engineers. It's a mix of software engineers and what are called product managers. So we don't really have project managers. We have product managers um, who work with the clients and um, it's been very interesting experience, like doing standups with them. It really does mimic what we learned at General Assembly Bootcamp, um, particularly for Project Week, uh, literally like 15 minutes um, talking about what we did, what we need help with, blah, blah, blah. Like that was literally what we did during Bootcamp uh, Project Week. So it's nice to see that, that crossover in the real world. Um, and especially with Git, like I said, Git, or what I was saying is Git is where I really shined um, during this bootcamp because like I said, most of my classmates had never really used Git, maybe seen it, but never used it. A few of them attended other boot camps, and from what they told me, they weren't so much having to use Git. It was just kind of like the instructor told them what to do. They didn't really have to do it on their own. Um, so. I definitely think General Assembly in that sense really like sh shined for me because I was the one that's teaching a lot of my coworkers like tips and tricks and um, told them to go practice on GitHub because we use something different at work, but uh, told them to go practice on GitHub um, in their spare time. So that was like a real full circle moment for me because I know prior to the bootcamp, I knew I did not know Git and I didn't take the time to honestly learn it. Um, I needed that boot camp to kind of give me the push to do it versus, uh, you know, doing it self-study. So if you're self-studying, highly recommend learning Git. It literally like, I won't say put me above, but what I would say is that it definitely sh shine. So it definitely was a good gold star on my record because I was not only well versed in it, but I was able to teach my other coworkers. So clearly it's like, that's how you learn and that's how you understand. So that was another thing about learning with Java and Spring. So we have a company, I don't think it's a company. I think it's a general thing. It's called Pluralsight. Um, you can probably look it up and it's, you have to pay for it, but our company sponsors it. What I also found interesting was the things that I had to teach myself. So it was, this boot camp has been a mix of like, lectures learning through from other software engineers and product product managers 
but also a lot of self-paced learning because obviously like Java, you're just gonna have to sit down and do it on your own and Angular, same thing. And they were there for resources, but they really were teaching us like to utilize our own things. And honestly, their plural site stuff was boring. So what I actually ended up doing is I went back to Codecademy and free, I looked at Free Code Camp, but Free Code Camp isn't really Java based, but I went back to Codecademy and I took a course on Java and I'm taking a course on Angular. Um, in spring, I've just used different resources, but it's funny because it's like another full circle moment for me because even when I, uh, some of the software engineers came to talk to us about their day, day to day, you know, I asked them like, Hey, do you only use company sponsored resources or do you use other things? And they were like, no, we, we use, like, I use a lot of outside resources. And I was like, it's so interesting. Like, you know, in the boot camp, I feel like I kind of learned that lesson. Like these resources are always valuable, no matter what career you're in, no matter what level of your career, you know, I, di I didn't think I'd be using code academy, free code camp, you know, all these other things in the meantime, you know, after work, like I thought I was probably just going to focus on the employer, employer, employer provided resources. But in reality, I, what did I do? I went straight, I was like, oh no, this video is boring. I went to Codecademy, I learned it on Codecademy, and then I went back to the employer sponsored resource plural site. And I utilized, um, I watched the videos and um, looked for other things to do on there. So these resources really never like, go away they always come in handy and it's also something to always note because it's nice to know that you kind of have your go-to of where you want to go when you need to quickly pick something up you already have an idea of where you need to start looking so i did i downgraded from codecademy pro to free but i feel like the free version gives me the basic intro that i need to then go back to the employer um to the plural site and do their courses and I have a lot, I have a better understanding of how it works. I just feel like Codecademy speaks well, but there's, speaks well to someone who doesn't know what they're doing, but I feel like there's a lot of gaps when you use Codecademy. So you always need some kind of supplemental resource like Free Code Camp or Pluralsight to do that. I'm also sales service, Salesforce certified. So now I'm working, I'm currently, I'm debating between, um, so in my company, half are Salesforce certified and half are AWS. So I'm kind of thinking about doing both, you know. Um, AW, I see a lot of my coworkers talking about the AWS cloud, cloud practitioner exam. So um, I know I've heard that it's not good to go for both or to focus on one thing. I, I haven't really heard that it's not good to go for both, but I've heard it just focus on one thing. But I want to not only make sure that I'm marketable, but I want to... I'm, I plan for my, I was told when I started this job to plan for the role you want at the company, but also plan for the future. And I'm not a hundred percent sure what I want to do just yet in software engineering. Like if I want to go into like healthcare tech or what I want to do. So I'm trying to utilize this time where I'm like still excited, like still like, oh yeah, to get these certifications out the way and then maybe based on that role um you know based on which certification i like more maybe i'll just follow continue to follow that path um but right now our team is like most of the projects are, are half salesforce half aws so i have options um so maybe once i'm done with the boot camp then i can see which project i want and that will probably point me in the direction of which um which uh, certification path I want to continue to follow. It's funny, I, I enjoy learning and definitely that's what they sold me on when uh, I was I was interviewing and I can definitely see how they truly value learning and paying for courses and paying for things to make sure that you can pass your tests. So I think that's awesome. Lastly, I thought I escaped data structures and algorithms. No, no didn't escape them. I did not escape the instructions and other algorithms. I didn't have a lot of exposure to it because I got a job not too, I would say fairly quickly. I don't know if two months is quickly, but in my mind, opinion, I didn't have to spend extensive time learning data structures and algorithms before I received my, this role. So now I was like on the back end, I have to now go back and really hone in because I'm, I, I see, they're a pain in the butt to pass, but 
I do truly see why data sources and algorithms are important, especially when you're working with larger businesses. I, I get it. Um, and that's not my strong point. And of course, I want to um, soak up as much knowledge as possible. I want to utilize this time um, that I have working from home um, because this job is actually an in-person role. So once it's safe to go back to the office full time, um, I'll be going into the office. So I won't really have as much like downtime as I do now to really uh, learn. So <sighs> eventually I'm gonna start re going through that Udemy course, which I will link below um, the Udemy course that I was learning using um, when I was prepping for interviews and things like that. So I'll be going back to that. So it's just a lot of like learning. They really, they, they, the tweets and Twitter and Everything I've ever read, they always talk about how like software engineering is like a lifelong learning process. And I truly see that. I see that. Like, I'm, I feel like there's never going to be a time where I just work and go to like work and then get off. Like, I feel like there's always going to be something new for me to learn, always something new for me to do. Like, and I don't mind because I'm like, like, this is the beginning of my career. I don't know about in a few years, but. You know, I thought I wanted to be a product manager, but a project slash product manager. But after I learned what they actually do, um, which is why I see they also why they say like get some exposure. Um, no, it's not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. But um, Maya Codes and Amnesia, I think that's her name. Um, they're two software engineers who also have YouTube channels. Created a data structures and algorithms flashcard set and a digital, so I will link it up below. I plan to buy it and uh, give you guys some feedback on it. Um, I'm, a, I'm big into flashcards. That's how I learned in undergrad. That's how I learned most of my stuff. I'm through writing and flashcards. So um, I will link their link to their flashcards. I think it's $10 um, for the data structures and algorithms. I flipped through the preview and it looked pretty legit. So plan to look at that. And it's a sh to me like $10 for data structures and algorithms, I think it's great. So I'm going to definitely purchase those. If those of you who like more of like the flashcards and the notes type, uh, if you that stuff you like, highly recommend looking into it and seeing if that's something you want to do. Or maybe, you know, you might be able to do it better. That's something you could do on the side and make the flashcards and sell them as well. That's something to consider while you're, you're job hunting. So um, that's pretty much it for me. This has been my first month. I won't do a second month, but what I'll probably do is do like a three month or a six month update. But that's my first month as a cloud native software engineer. A lot of learning, a lot of uh, pair programming. That's a big thing too. We've done, I've done a lot of pair programming, watching more senior engineers um, code. So that's been an interesting experience, especially virtually. I had a lot of experience with that in General Assembly. And now, you know, for it to all come full circle. Like I think I'm a little harsh on General Assembly, but I think they did a pretty good job with preparing us for the real world so far. You know, I'm only a month in, so you know, we'll see in a few months if I feel that way. But right now I'm only a few months in. So um yeah, that's it for me. Um my next few videos I'm gonna talk about job hunting and I have a few like fun videos. I think they're fun. I'm gonna see how fun they really are, but I have a few fun videos planned, but I also want to talk about job hunt and how, what I think is going on with the job hunt, especially for junior level software engineers slash software developers, um, and why a lot of people are getting discouraged. I do want to have a discussion about that, not really teach, but have a discussion about it. So that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great month. Um, my winners for my giveaway have been announced. So you should have already gotten an email if you won. Runners up will be getting sent out later this week if I don't hear from the original people. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your month, a uh, great rest of your week. You know, as always, my emails are always open. Uh, my DMs are always open. I'm going to stop linking my Twitter because I don't really use it, but everything's always open. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, it may take me a little bit to get back, but I will get back to you. So with that being said, have a good one.